Good morning. Welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Madisonville, Tennessee on this beautiful sunny day. I am Leanne Strickland and today is Sunday, June 27th, 2021. The First United Methodist Church of Madisonville, Tennessee during this streaming worship service is either performing musical material published prior to 1925 and in the public domain or performing musical material by permission of CCLI. Appropriate credit is posted at the bottom of each slide displaying copyright and material, which is intended for the purpose of congregational singing. FUMC holds a CCLI license to stream this material, and copies of our licenses are on file in the church office. Uh, we do have a quick update from our, uh, board, our administrative board chair, SPPRC chair, and trustees chair, all the VIPs. Uh, I'm just going to read this uh, announcement about... Uh, CDC guidelines. The conference has informed us that we now have permission to follow CDC guidelines regarding masking during church functions. Based upon this, it has been determined that masking for the Sunday morning service will not be required for all persons who have been fully vaccinated. Those who, those not yet fully vac vaccinated should continue to wear masks. So questions about that, you can direct to one of those uh, chair people. Laurie has an announcement this morning. So, Laurie. Take a look at some of the things that you would have to offer and you have to join in 
All right, thank you, Lori. If you didn't hear that at home, uh, there is a lot of information displayed in the fellowship hall from the UMW. Uh, so if you are here today or not, take time in the next uh, week or so, or few days to come by and take a look at what all they have going on. Uh, looking for more people to get involved. And uh, so take a look and, and see the things that you may be interested in. Now, this morning we shared time to say thanks to Reverend Mike Hubble and family. If you missed it, please get in touch with Mike and Margaret and let them know how much we appreciate what he has brought to our church family over these past few months. Uh, you can send us an email or make a Facebook post and we'll be happy to make sure Mike and Margaret get that for you. Um, the July-August issues of the Upper Room are available on the table by the coffee bar in the gathering area, so please take one for yourself and friends and family members uh, as long as they are available. Uh, for those of you here in person, you will notice that the Bibles and hymnals have been brought back out of the mothballs. Yay! <laughs> they are in the pews, so thanks to Kevin Taylor for arranging this next step in our getting back to normal. And I like to think that we won't just be getting back to normal, we will get better. So we have learned a lot over the last year and a half with COVID, and so we will get back to our normal, except it will be even better than it was before. We have our Vacation Bible School scheduled for July the 10th. This is a one-day VBS from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we encourage anyone to get involved that is available and interested. There are lots of different things we need help with, so mark your calendars July the 10th. Uh, we will keep getting more information out about that, but you can let me or Sue know if you're willing and interested in helping with that. Uh, and we certainly appreciate your prayers as we prepare for kind of our first big kid event since COVID. So we want it to be great. Uh, we want to do a great job. <clears throat> we did not choose to do a full length Bible school this year because of some of the restrictions. Uh, so we want to bring our kids back with a bang. Uh, we want to do it really well. Now, we are ready to turn over the improved church contact list to Reverend Chris Black, who starts this week. Um, and he is anxious to get started. So if you aren't getting your emails, please check your junk or spam folder and tell your provider that this mail is not spam. If you use Gmail, you may find your emails in Gmail's annoying promotions folder in your inbox. If you are not subscribed to the emails, you can fix that at the top of oneumcm.com by entering your email address in the subscribe box and follow the instructions. And of course, if you need help with that, let Richard or Sue know. We want to make sure you get your church emails. Let Richard know if you need help with your emails. <laughs> All right, bear with us. We're working out. We're working it out. All right, the Blessing Box and the Good Shepherd Center continue to have great needs. Uh, your donations to either of these ministries are appreciated. Uh, they both need canned foods and other shelf-stable items, hygiene items for the Blessing Box. So when you shop for, for your family, pick up a few extra things for our Blessing Box located down on the Teleco Street parking lot um, or the Good Shepherd Center Box located at the front entrance to the sanctuary. The box is not there anymore. Oh. You cannot leave your stuff there. Uh, you can bring it on Sunday. Do we have? Or bring it to the office during the week. I'm sorry, guys. Um, if you have questions about that, just let us know. We're also collecting used eyeglasses. There's a white bag on the table by the coffee bar for your donations. I do know it is still there because I saw it. <laughs> bring in your old eyeglasses. We will make sure they get to someone who, who needs them. Uh, the Lions Club or other ministries who, who make good use of used eyeglasses. Now it's time to greet each other, uh, members of our church family and guests. For those of you who are here, we have a new camera just for this purpose. So instead of looking back in the sound booth, the congregation cam is to my right, your left on the wall. There's a big red arrow pointing to it. <laughs> so please wave at the congregation cam to our folks watching at home. And then greet each other by waving again and uh, give, a, give a big greeting to each other. Um, if you're watching digitally, send us a message. Uh, let us know you're, you're with us. Uh, may the peace of Christ to be with you. Also with you. 
Our musical call to worship this morning is Let's Just Praise the Lord. This is number 18 in the, con in the celebration hymnal, or you can sing it from the screen. Please stand. <laughs> written call to worship is in your bulletin and on the screens well here we are on this day gathered together so we can worship our God together some of us here for the music and some for praise and some for the cookies and coffee and we are all here because of God now is the time to give thanks to the of our hearts to share our lives and to hear the story of Jesus so, so friends, friends, let us worship, worship God. God. Our hymn of praise, O Worship the King. This is uh, page 104 and also on the screen. Now please remain standing and join me in the reading of the Apostles' Creed, the traditional version. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit it at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
to prayers and praises. I have a, a moment to spend with Pastor Hubble, if you'll join me up here. We got to celebrate uh, his time with us this morning with a beautiful breakfast and coffee bar uh, time, but we also have a little gift for you. And we just want you to know we love you, we appreciate you, and the time you spent with us has been a blessing to many of us. You always have a home here at First United Methodist in Madisonville. So if you'll go ahead and just open this up, we want you to see it. Okay. A little reminder from your friends here in Madisonville. I sure hope so. Thank you. I sure hope so. Uh -huh. And I'll, I'll read the back of it. Okay. I'll read the back of it just so everyone can see here. This is presented to Reverend Mike Hubble in appreciation for your dedicated service to our church as our interim minister for March 28th through June 27th, 2021. Thank you for the love and support you have shown to us. We will certainly miss you. So please think of us often, and we hope you'll come visit. Once, once Reverend Black gets here and gets started, we'd love to have you come we will. and visit for a service. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And Margaret, it's been a pleasure to have you with us as well. And this goes with it, I'll let you. It serves. Well, morning's full of surprises. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you so much for the beautiful picture of the church. It will be a reminder uh, of our time of our time spent together. And thank you for this morning. But and I, I guess I go ahead and, and share this uh, about the food, the, the the reception this morning. I'm just so thankful and for the fellowship that we enjoyed together. I didn't get to enjoy the food because I'm having a medical procedure in the morning. And, uh, but Margaret fixed me a big old doggy bag, two of them. <laughs> and as soon as I get back in the car tomorrow, <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy what you all prepared for today. And I uh, thank you, thank you so very, very much for that. And I am uh, grateful for the way you have received Margaret and I. Uh, we felt right at home from the first time we walked in, uh, in the sanctuary. I'd never been here before. I was a stranger to you all, you are to her to me. But uh, we felt right at home from the very beginning and we're grateful to you for that. And we're grateful that uh, we could come here and, and share time with you and, and, and be a part of, of your getting ready for the new pastor who will be coming uh, starting Thursday of this week. Uh, I think my duties end at midnight on Wednesday. <laughs> and, uh, and Chris Chris will be here on uh, be beginning on Thursday and his first Sunday will be here in the pulpit next Sunday. And uh, I, I'm just excited about uh, your ministry together and, and the good things that are going, the good things are already happening in this church and good things will continue to happen with Chris as your minister. And uh, just look forward to, to, and we will come back and, and visit some point in time to, to give Chris time to get settled in. We'll come back and see you and look forward to that time as well. Uh, Margaret and I were talking this morning. Uh, this is another goodbye at, at a church, and she said they're getting to be too frequent <laughs> because we said goodbye last year uh, at Spring City about this time of year, and a year before that we said goodbye at Tasso and Charleston, and now goodbye this morning. But uh, we're just grateful uh, for the way God has been with us during this time, and and. Uh, for having had the opportunity to uh, just to serve among you. And we just pray God's blessing on you and we'll pray for you every day. So let us pray together. Oh God, our Father, the one who has brought us together 
in ministry and who has been with us each time we have gathered for worship and other times that we have gathered away as well to take care of the business of the church and to fellowship together. Indeed, O oh God, the church is yours. It is by your hand that the church has been brought into existence. And you have filled your people with your spirit that your ministry might continue as long as we are here. Not just in this moment, but into eternity. We thank you, O oh God, for every person who is a part of this congregation and I ask your blessings on each one. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to come and share in ministry here. And thank you, Father, for sending Chris Black to be the pastoral leader of this congregation. You have given him many wonderful gifts for ministry. You have filled him with your spirit. And he is excited, Lord, as you know, to be coming here. We just pray your blessing on the ministry that they will share together, and we pray that it will be a fruitful ministry, that it will be a time when your kingdom grows in this congregation, in this community. Pray that those who don't know Jesus will be brought to him. And we pray that the faith of those who already know him will be strengthened. And we pray, God, that the ministries of this church will continue to grow, to reach out and to touch the lives of so many. Send Pentecost again, O oh God, to First Methodist, United Methodist Church here in Madisonville. And Lord, we have a lot of folks on our prayer concern list this morning. You know every one of them by name. Every one of them is precious to you. And we just ask that you embrace them with your love. Send your healing where it is needed. Send your comfort where it is needed. Send your encouragement where it is needed. Send your love, O oh Lord, to us all. For we lift our prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I do have uh, three or four specific prayer concerns that have come up this week, and uh, let me just let me just put these in front of us. Uh, be in prayer for the for Nicholas Radosevich and family. Nicholas is our senior that graduated. They left this week to begin. He left this week to begin college classes. They've gone down to Florida. It's going to be a big change for the Radosevich family. So we want to wish Nicholas good luck. We're proud of him and uh, give him traveling, give them traveling mercies to come back home and to leave their big boy down there in Florida now at the big university. Uh, be in prayer for Karen and Jeff McMillan and family. Karen's mother passed away about a week ago. Uh, Joan Holland let us know that last week we prayed for uh, Jack Williams. He's the wife of John Summit's niece, Joanne. He's passed away this week, so please pray for the family of Jack Williams. 
Lois Green let me know yesterday that her neighbor, Don Hageman, had passed away from COVID. It's still out there, folks. Be very carefully and keep the Hageman family in your prayers. And she got a call just a little while ago that her daughter, uh, uh, Patty, had gone to urgent care and was going on to the ER um, up there for some um, 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 racing heart and things like that. So please be in prayer for Patty and the Lehman, Lehman family. And uh, be in prayer for the Good Shepherd Center. They're a little ways away from just opening up fully again, but they're really needing volunteers. So Dora's ready to take names and numbers and pass all the information on. They really need good volunteers. Uh, uh, things are beginning to look up again for Good Shepherd Center, so we need to do that. There's a lot of other prayer concerns in the uh, bulletin. Uh, Janet Robbins also asked for prayers for her father, Paul Janet Tweed asked for prayers for her father, Paul Robbins, who has been admitted back into the hospital. So Paul has been in and out quite a few times, but he's back in the hospital now. So please be in prayer for Paul Robbins and Janet and all the family. Are there any other new prayer concerns we need to add? If not, we have a big list in your bulletin um, and on the, in the newsletter, on, on uh, our website. Please be sure and pray for all of these folks, too. Uh, like I say, we're not going to read all the names, but there are 20 or 30 on the list right there, plus our continuing list that's in the ongoing list. So uh, please pray for all of these folks. Let's stand for a, a hymn of meditation, Yesu, Yesu. question. How do you know that a person loves you? Now, the word love in English is kind of weird. In English, you can love a person, but you can also love the color blue, uh, love a car, or even, I suppose, love chicken livers. <laughs> so I'd like to teach you a new word for a kind of love, the Greek word agape. This, in the Bible, is the word Jesus used. And it's the highest form of love between humans and between humans and between humans and God. Agape is the word Jesus used for the unconditional love we have for our family 
our children, our best friends, our partners. It's the best kind of love, and it makes us feel really good inside when we have it. It's also the kind of love God has for us, and we should have for him. Agape is a good word, and thankfully, you cannot agape fried chicken livers. <laughs> if you really need English words to use instead of agape, I, I guess you could use the word to care for. So how do you know if a person cares for you? In your life, there may be many people who give you nice things, say nice words, make you feel happy. Many times, though, they only want it because they want something back from you, perhaps money or power or, in the middle school context, popularity. That's not caring for you. That's a contract. It's, you know, I'll give you this if you give me that. It's what we call conditional, meaning if you stop giving them what they want, they'll stop being your BFF. And I'm going to translate that for the boomers, best friend forever. When someone truly cares for you, they do it unconditionally, meaning they keep doing it without wanting something back. Even if they care for you, it means that they care for you even if you don't care back for them. The Bible tells us that God loves and cares for us unconditionally. But in our lives on earth, we get so few people who care for us like that. And even though they still care for us, it hurts them badly when they don't hear or see or feel that we care for them back. That's why it is so important for us to take time to show our care for them and say the words, I care for you, or I love you, or do something nice for them out of the blue, unexpectedly, and for no other reason than you love them. God knows when you do this, and it makes him happy when you do it. But he can keep those chicken livers. Let us pray. Loving God, please fill the people who care for us with your best blessings. Please keep them in our lives as long as you are able to, and help us to constantly be as the biggest source of joy on earth for them. And when you take them to heaven to be with you, please fill them with your grace and joy. Please help us to also learn to practice unconditional love for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Continuing on the topic of language, as, ad as adults, we know that Jesus didn't speak English. Surprise. He likely, like most people who were educated at that time and place, spoke Hebrew, Latin, Aramaic, and Greek. The Gospel of Matthew was composed in Greek. On here, on screen, and in red, is the old firm form of the agape for agapesis, for the great commandment to unconditionally love God, unconditionally love those nearby. In today's lesson from Mark, Jesus tells us that he wants us not to be served, but rather to serve. We follow our Lord's instructions when we individually help others or donate to the Good Shepherd Center or give to the Blessing Box. But the greatest impact of our gifts happen when we together generously support the church and its ministries with our gifts. We serve best when we serve together. Collection plates are at the door and your other options for giving are listed under the tithing tab at oneumcm.com. Let us pray. We strive to grow in generosity, Lord, so that our giving is a reflection of our desire to be servants to you and to our neighbors. Bless our wallets, because they participate in our expressions of our faith in you. We ask you to magnify our gifts in the service of your kingdom. In your holy name we pray, amen. Now the choir has a special treat for you. Let's just praise the Lord.
Thank you, Sue, and, and choir. And again, it's so good to have our choir back with us in worship. And uh, it's good to welcome our old friends, the hymnals, uh, and the Bibles back into our pews as well. And gradually, everything's getting back to normal in here, and we're, we're grateful. And again, I don't know how blessed you all have been by those children's sermons, but I'll miss a lot of things here, but one of the things I'll miss the most is children's sermons. Thank you, Richard. You do such a wonderful job. And Leanne and uh, the sound folks, Richard, and it, it, takes a, it takes a team to do all this, and uh, you have a wonderful team. And I just pray that that team will continue, and I know it will, as, as Chris comes to minister among you. Well, I had a bit of a dilemma. Four weeks ago, I decided that I was going to preach a stewardship sermon on this final Sunday, i.e., a money sermon. <laughs> I've been to a couple meetings and I uh, felt like I probably needed to do that. But the Lord wouldn't let me do that and uh, He led me to another in another direction. And so this morning the sermon title is Living the Servant Life. And the scripture is from Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter, reading verses 35 through 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one on your right hand and one on your left in your glory when you come into your kingdom. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Be to God. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It seems, it seems the hardest part of Jesus' teaching for his disciples to grasp was the importance of living a servant life. When Jesus talked with them about the kingdom of God, about the great commandment, about prayer, about forgiveness, they nodded in agreement. 
just like some of you do on Sunday mornings when the, something is said from the pulpit or Richard says something that you agree with, some of you give it this, a nod. But when Jesus started talking with them about being servants, it just went right over their heads. And we see evidence of it in the scripture that we read a moment ago. James and John, who were among the first chosen by Jesus to be his disciples, came to him and said, can we have a word with you? Jesus said, yeah. yeah. What can I do for you? And they said, Jesus, this is what we want. When you come into your glory and into your kingdom and you sit upon your throne, we want you to let one of us sit on your yeah, left hand and one of us sit on your right hand. And I think just as soon as they said that, there was a look of exasperation on Jesus' face. The Bible doesn't say that. But I think there was a look of exasperation on Jesus' face. I think there was a look of disappointment, maybe even disbelief. How could they be asking that? Let us have a place of prestige in your kingdom. Let us have a place of power in your kingdom. And it exasperating to Jesus because just a short time before this, he had caught the disciples discussing among themselves which of them was the greatest. You remember that? They were talking among themselves, which of us is the greatest? And it might have come up, which one of us is going to sit at the highest seat? Which one of us is going to sit on his right hand? Which one of us is going to sit on his left hand? And at that point, Jesus said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last and servant of all. A servant spirit begins with letting God sit on the throne of our hearts. It means putting God first in our lives and our bowing down to him. A servant spirit means looking at the world around us and those in it through the eyes of Jesus. Which means we look at them through the eyes of love. And someone who lives the servant life has a spirit of doing. In the words of James, we are doers of the word and not just hearers. We take advantage of the opportunities to serve that open up to us. Not everyone is called to be a full-time, in full-time Christian service like being a minister or like being a missionary or some other work like that. We're not all called to that. We can't all be a Billy Graham. We can't all be a Mother Teresa. We can't all be a Martin Luther King Jr. But we are all called to serve. In every church where I've pastored, there have been folks who have had this servant spirit, including this one. I think of some of those folks and it brings a smile to my face. I think of Jewel Blocker. Jewel was a retired school teacher. And she lived right down below where 
Margaret and I lived in the parsonage when we were at Unity Church in Cleveland. And Jewel was active in her community. She was retired. She had time on her hands. There was a blind lady who lived across the road from her. And Jewel often went and got her groceries for her. Mr. and Miss Rose lived down the road a little ways from her, and she was often at their house to do something for them. She had a brother who was at Moccasin Bend, the mental hospital in Chattanooga. And she would catch a bus twice a week and go down to see him. And she would do his laundry, and sometimes she would bring home other people's laundry to do as well. I think of Jewel and a smile. And one of the things that she did, especially for Margaret and I, we were in school at that time. I was at Candler at, at Emory, and we left Cleveland on Sunday night and came home on Friday evening. And when we got there, we found that Jewel had made little frozen dinners for us. And we didn't have to worry about preparing our meals while we were home. Think of other people. I think of George and Mildred and Lois and Ralph and Linda and Stella and Mildred and Karen and Pam and the list goes on and on. All who had a servant spirit. You see, living the servant life is not really hard. It's not hard to be a servant. It's not hard at all. On August the 31st, 2015, I came into the office over at Sweetwater, and uh, there was a note on my desk that, Mike, there was a message on our web page, or ever how it got to our church, from a woman about who was at the ball game yesterday, and the evening before, we had taken the youth group from the church to see the Smokies play baseball. And I thought, oh no. What in the world happened? But let me read you her message. I hope this is the correct church. If not, please disregard. We attended a baseball game birthday party at the Smoky Stadium today. A group of young ladies wearing First United Methodist Church Sweetwater t-shirts came into the restroom at the same time my daughters and I were in there. I was still in the stall while my youngest was trying to wash her hands and couldn't reach the soap. One of the young ladies offered to help her and lifted her up so she could reach it and helped her get paper towels. And after we left the restroom, my little six-year-old was so excited to tell me how kind the girl had been to her. I mean, not normal excited, but like she just met a Disney princess excited. It was a simple act of kindness, but it was so big to her. I work with teen girls at my job, and I'm always excited to have good examples of non-stereotypical, non-self-absorbed teens for her to look up to. If it was a wonderful teaching moment, especially since the young lady was actually living up to the verse on her shirt. Just thought you would like to know. I know I would be proud if she were one of mine. And this is the T-shirt she was wearing, not the one she was wearing. But you see what it has on the front of it? We had these T-shirts made while I was at Sweetwater. 
living the servant life. And on the back of it, it says, Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. It's not really hard to be a servant. When Margaret and I were up at Gray, Tennessee, I got another phone call one afternoon, and it was someone saying, Mike, you need to watch 6 o'clock news on a certain station out of Johnson City. And I said, why? And they said, well, just watch it. You'll see. And when I turned on the news that night and watched, partway through that newscast, there was the picture of Melanie Sexton, one of our sixth graders. And she and a group of her friends, really her classmates, were over at Muncie Memorial United Methodist Church serving a meal that was always served at noon on Wednesdays to the homeless people in that community. And I thought, wow, how'd that happen? So when I had a chance to talk to, to Melody's mother and daddy, I asked, how did, how did that happen? They said, well, you know, it was spring of the year and it was time when cl classes at school were going on their field trips. The eighth grade went to Washington, D.C. The seventh grade went, I think, down to Huntsville to the Space Museum. And, and this particular teacher let her class decide what they wanted to do. They, they could go to the uh, water park in, in, in Pigeon Forge. They could go to the zoo. They could even go down to the aquarium in, in Chattanooga. And she said, anybody else have a suggestion? And Melanie's hand went up and said, yeah. So why don't we help our church prepare the meal for the hungry people and take it over to the Johnson City Church? And that, it was a meal that was done every, every so often by that church. And Melanie had helped her parents do that over her Christmas break. And it touched her heart. And she talked to her class about that and told them what she had done. And would you believe that every child in that class, instead of voting to go to the water park or somewhere else, they voted to go do that meal. Now, where did Melanie learn that? She learned it from her mom and daddy. Because her mom and daddy were just like that. They were servant people. They wanted to serve to... Whenever opportunities came, they serve. It's not hard to be a servant. It's not hard to live the servant life. I've learned a lot from my young people about it. And I don't know whether you all can see what I have in my hand or not. It's a sponge foot. One Sunday morning, we were having youth Sunday at Red Bank Church, and uh, Betsy Crane did the children's sermon, and she talked about Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. And she used this as a prompt for her message. She talked about living the servant life. I've had it ever since. I kept it on my desk. I keep it on my bookshelf now. I don't want to ever forget. But I'm a servant. And so are we all. Free, we free. Stand for our closing hymn. Freely, freely. <laughs>
Let us pray. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace today and forevermore. Amen.